All right, now that we are successfully able to join a room, we need to make a canvas so players can see who's in the room, kick other players, uh, leave the room themselves, and start the match. So this is actually going to be pretty easy and quick because we did a lot of the work already for the lobby. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually select the lobby layout underneath canvas that we made already. And I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Control and then the letter D. You can also right click and choose duplicate while it's selected. Now I have lobby with one in the brackets. And with lobby one selected, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it, uh, I'll call it current room. And then I'm going to drag it up just above lobby. And then I'm going to select lobby and disable it over in the top right in the inspector. That's just so that I can edit current room and see my changes. Uh, so all I really have to do for the most part is just some renaming. So the create room button, um, we don't actually need that. So go ahead and delete it. We're going to keep the room list, except I'm going to rename it to player list. And then expand the viewport. And where it says room layout group, I'm going to call it player layout group. And uh, go ahead and remove the room layout group script here on the right. And where it says current room with that selected, remove the lobby canvas script. And now I need a prefab for each player listing inside the room. So I'm in my prefab folder right here where it has room listing. I'm just going to drag that up and drop it under where it says player layout group. And I'm going to rename room listing to player listing. And on the right where all the scripts are and components, I'm going to remove the room listing script. And then I'm going to make sure player listing is highlighted and drag and drop it into my prefabs. So I should now have the room listing and player listing prefab in here. Once you have that prefab saved, you can delete the player listing in your hierarchy. And go ahead and collapse player list. And then select current room. Do right click, UI, button. And I'm going to resize this button to take up uh, about a about a fifth of the left side here. I'm going to expand it and edit the text and I'm going to change the size to 64 like we were using before and I'm going to name the text start match. And I'm going to rename the button to start match as well. And I'm just going to duplicate the button. I'm going to move the duplicate and copy down a little bit. Actually, I'll just put it right on the bottom. I'm going to rename this to leave room. Go to the text option of it and also change that to leave room. And I'm going to select start match one more time. I'm going to duplicate a copy of it, move it just above leave room. You'll notice whenever I dropped it in here, it actually put it under start match. So I'm going to press control Z to undo that. And to prevent that from happening, you want to collapse start match and then drop it there. So set it to the same parent as whichever item you're dropping it below. So if I drag it and drop it underneath text, it's going to set the parent to start match. But if I drop it below start match, it's going to set the parent to current room because that is the parent of start match. So with the duplicated copy, I'm just going to rename it to room state. And I'm going to stretch it to fill out the empty area here and move it down a little so it's not covering up 
the start match button. And for the text on that, I'm just going to also set that to room state. So what we have here is this button is going to start the match once all the players are in. This one is going to toggle it from a locked to unlocked state so that other players can join or not join. And this will exit you from the rub. So that's all we need to do to set up the current room canvas. Uh, so go ahead and collapse the current room in the hierarchy. Select lobby and enable it once again so it's on top. And save your scene and then we can begin scripting.